We're back, and it's pretty clear our country's at a crossroads. The latest NBC Wall Street Journal poll shows nearly 70% of us think the country's on the wrong track. And both the Republican and Democratic Party approval ratings are at or near all-time lows. It's no surprise there's huge interest in a third alternative for the presidential race. A new group, Americans Elect, is providing just that, a third option on the ballot box this election day. Republican, Democrat, Independent, they don't care. The candidate will be nominated through their open online convention to take place in several rounds from April to June of 2012, and the ticket will be on the ballot in all 50 states. Forget depending on a handful of extreme voters in Iowa and New Hampshire to give us our choices. If it works, this could provide millions of us the chance to pick what we want, not what's being offered to us. Americans elect is getting high praise from some political bigwigs. Tom Friedman of the New York Times says this could make way for the radical center. Ruth Marcus, my colleague at the Washington Post, calls them a phenomenon worth watching. And I myself have called Americans elect a potential breakthrough way to challenge the Democrats' timid half measures and the Republicans' crazy anti-government nihilism. Joining me now is CEO of Americans elect, Khalil Burld. Welcome, Khalil. Thank you very much. It's so good to see you again, Matt. Good to see you. So here's my question. You guys have made you know, enormous progress in terms of uh, getting yourself on the ballot as best you can by the end of this year, getting a lot of the chattering class to take interest and talk about you. This is really crunch time now because between now and really April, you've got to have millions of Americans become more involved and also candidates willing to put themselves forward. What's your plan between now and then to really ramp this up? All the indicators say that the American people are ready. We've had more than two million people sign petitions for Americans elect to get on the ballot. Right now, as you point out, we're done with the process in 30 states. We'll be done with all 50 by summer. In January, the process opens up for candidates to begin to step forward. The American people who are coming to AmericansElect.org at half a million people a month are ready for an alternative. You pointed it out. Iowa and New Hampshire and a 100-year-old primary system are antiquated. What people are looking for is an alternative. We think it's a bipartisan ticket running in 2012, talking about the issues that the American people care about, not you know failed super committee bargains or two-month extensions that aren't pushing the middle class forward. Now, what's your, but what are you actually going to do to increase public awareness of this? Right now, you've got some opinion leaders who are engaged in this. I know you've got stuff going on in various states, but it's a very short time for you to get, you know, from, from just that smaller group to really millions of Americans being aware of this. Are you guys going to be doing advertising? Are you going to be, what, what's the plan? Well, we have everything from our 3,000 volunteers who are putting together meetups all around the country, a bus tour that will go from New Hampshire to Florida this, this uh, spring. But most importantly, it's candidates beginning to step forward, talking about the issues that people care about. You talk about the Republican Party in, in one way, but here's one thing they did prove with all of these uh, candidacies that are, are flare-outs is that somebody can create an impression about what they think is right for America in a very quick period of time and between now and April when our national primary opens and our convention in June, we think that several candidates are going to step forward to articulate what the American people are looking for. That's solutions, decisions that are going to make us this country great again. Now, who, who do you think, you guys must be talking to folks uh, around the country who are potential candidates, briefing them on this process, who do you think may become part of this? There's talk sometimes that a John Huntsman, if he doesn't, you know, if he kind of uh, f phases out uh, immediately in the GOP primary, he's got folks. There's folks who think a Ron Paul, if he ends up out of it uh, in the next couple of weeks, he's got some very active groups uh, that are trying to support him. But then there are those who are worried that a Donald Trump, you know, somebody with 100 percent name recognition, even a Stephen Colbert, could could end up, uh, you know, deciding to throw their hat in the ring in a way that would hijack this in a weird way. How are you guys thinking about protecting against that? We've talked to almost 30 potential candidates around the country. We as an organization don't have issues. We don't support the candidacies. This is a vehicle for the American people to take. But what is important is that people who are constitutionally qualified, who've shown leadership, been governors, been senators, run businesses, run universities, are going to have an opportunity to run strong and get on the ballot in 2012 at a time when we're used to things closing back down. You pointed it out. The primary system and the two-party system is not serving America well. Eighty-one percent of the American people are disappointed. What we think is that several candidates stepping forward can create a national profile for themselves, that the act of reaching across the aisle and picking someone of another uh, 
party to run with them and standing on the stage in the debates in the fall and also uh, the advertising and the campaign that they can run actually gives someone an opportunity and the American people the opportunity for more choice in 2012. Now the White House is obviously watching what you're doing. I want to put a quote up that David Axelrod offered to the New York Times the other day. He said uh, Axelrod obviously is Obama's chief campaign strategist saying it's supposed to be the most democratic nominating process ever except there's a board of censors to decide who's actually worthy of the nomination or not. So it's kind of like uber democracy meets backroom bosses. How do you respond to that? Such a smart man didn't read our rules and bylaws. He would know that the more than 100 people who've come to the table to serve on our board of advisors and others have one simple mission, and that is opening up the doorway for the American people to take over this process. The delegates, a delegate as any registered voter in America, have the opportunity at this point to shape the, how this is done, to choose the candidates and choose the issues. Uh, what I think you're seeing is old politics meeting something that's new that the American people are demanding and that's real leadership in terms of this campaign. Some people are saying that this is going to be one of the most negative campaigns in history. This at a time when unemployment is over 8 percent and we don't have anything near a grand bargain. Some people think, our organization especially, Democrats, Republicans and Independents can put greatness on the ballot in 2012 and that Americans elect is the way to do it. Now you've already got, I noticed when I look at uh, the different uh, committees you have that are running different parts of the, uh, overseeing different parts of your process, you've got some prominent R's and D's and independents who have come forward to be involved with this. A guy like William Webster, the Republican former head of the FBI. Jim Thompson, a, a guy who I know from uh, Los Angeles who for a long time was the head of the RAND Corporation, the Public Policy Institute. Even a True. Democratic policy policy guru like Will Marshall, who people may remember ran the uh, public policy, uh, the Progressive Policy Institute that was part of the Clinton uh, surge in 1992, the policy infrastructure. Uh, what do you attribute? Are, are they getting a lot of flack from their traditional uh, colleagues for stepping out in this way and supporting this process? Add to your list Republican Christine Todd Whitman, who ran New Jersey as governor, and Dennis Blair, who was the national uh, intelligence advisor to the president. What they're doing, Democrats, Republicans, and independents, are gathering together and doing what Americans always do when they see a problem. We think Americans elect can be a solution. It's the first time ever that there'll be an open competition where every American can, voter can participate in what is essentially a national primary to put real leadership on the ballot in 2012. This hasn't happened before, and what, what I think you're seeing is that people are willing right now to reach across the aisle, go above themselves to pick a president above their own party needs so that we can start to see some of the solutions that we've all been talking about place forward and actually go into legislation next year. Just about 30 seconds left. I want to push you on how you guys are going to build public awareness of this because uh, and maybe you're just not ready to talk about it yet, but it seems to me it's a very tall order to get from where we are now around January 1 to have the kind of uh, national sensation that it would take to get all the folks involved flooding the website to have millions of Americans being involved in this process. So it's not just hijacked by what, what could potentially be, you know, a few uh, rogue kind of folks with 100 percent name recognition. Tell me, my, there's a bus tour you mentioned. What, what else you got? Imagine this. Imagine a candidate stepping forward, talking about the issues, not because the special interest told them to or deals that they're made in, in small rooms in the parties, but actually talking about the issues that people care about. That in and of itself is going to bring the attention. Add to that hundreds of advisors who've stepped forward from each of the parties and independents and thousands of volunteers on the ground. We're going to continue telling the story everywhere we possibly can, and the candidates are going to have a debate that, that hasn't been seen in American life and certainly isn't being seen right now in the Democratic and Republican primary processes. All right, Khalil Bird, I, I am a fan of what you are doing. I understand some people's anxiety about which way it could go, but I think it could give us a chance if this uh, unfolds in the right way in the months ahead to really challenge the, uh, the way that both parties are going for 50% plus one, which has nothing to do with solving the country's biggest problems. We'll be watching. Coming up Thanks. on Hardball with just a 